Who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord? He that hath clean hands and pure hearts. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Cleansing Fire. We're so glad to have you stop by and worship with us today. We're expecting great things as God gives us revelation and reveals a little bit more of who he is. So stay with us. You're with Eden Life International. I'm your senior pastor, Reverend Nicole Balasing Holder. Let's worship and come back to hear from the Lord. Lift your hands and declare, your God is in control. Whatever it may be. Are you just going through the motions? Are you just standing on a prayer? Just mingling with the masses Knowing that you're not really there oh, Are you just listening but not hearing As your life goes passing by Tell me and have you lost all need for care do you just need some strength to try? It's on days like these God is holding your hand Days like these He's gonna give you strength to stand And everything he said it'd be He's being that right now Trust him if you can't trace him He will show you how God who knows you, a God who holds you, a God who loves you forevermore. And he's a God who fights for you, this God, he delights in you, my God, he loves you forevermore. Are we awake but sleeping soundly? Are we content but not fulfilled? Oh, deafening screams we hold in silently. We're running around while life stands still. Fighting but knowing you've given up the fight. Ah, secretly hiding in plain sight. You're outwardly smiling, but screaming inside. Sorrows and tears disguised with a smile. It's on days like these, God is holding your hand. Days like these, he's gonna give you strength to stand. And everything he said he'd be, he's being that right just trust him if you can't trace him he will show you how oh he's a god who knows you a god who holds you a god he loves you forevermore yes he is a god who fights for you this god he delights in you my
ghoul fights for you. This God delights in you, my God. He loves you forevermore. He's a God who knows you. This God, he holds you, my God. He loves you, he loves you with an everlasting love. This God will fight for you. worthy, O Lord. You are excellent. We lift you up in this place today. We magnify you and you alone. You are worthy of all the honor. Everything that we can give to you, you are worthy of it. You deserve it, O my God. Father, open the eyes of your people. Open their understandings this day. And O God, may they receive the power and the authority of your holy, precious word. We thank you today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Welcome again to Cleansing Fire and for joining us at Eden Life International. I am your pastor. I am your prayer partner. I'm Reverend Nicole Ballasing Holder. It is great to have you in church today. It's great to know that you are ready to hear from God, to experience what you've never experienced before, to learn of Him, to know your Father more and more. Today we want to talk a little bit, and it's a little bit of a continuation of what we've been doing what we did on prayer point and you need to come on in on prayer point every thursday at eight because god is just opening himself up to us it's not just prayer but it is a revelation of his word and we don't want to do anything in his presence for the lord without understanding and this is where God is leading us. And today I want to talk to you about living in the Spirit. Living in the Spirit. A lot of people's perception about that word Spirit, it tends to become spooky. It tends to be mysterious. And a lot of it is misguided because man is a three-dimensional being. We were created spirit, soul, and body. So in order for us to live, we see the body. We see the soul manifesting itself through our will and emotions and everything that the soul carries. But very hardly we see the work of the spirit in our lives. Let's go straight to Galatians chapter 5. 24 25 it says those who belong to jesus christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires since we live by the spirit let us keep in step with the spirit powerful scripture powerful instruction but we need to understand what it means. You see, the power of salvation, of accepting what Christ has done for us, it manifests many results in the life of the one who wholeheartedly receive it. But one of the most 
powerful results for the person who accepts all of Christ and surrenders all to Christ is the power to live in the Spirit. You see, God's plan of salvation was simply to reconcile or bring man back to his rightful, legal, created position, back to him. And when God created man, he did so with thoughtful purpose. And all the things he created him with, it empowered him to function perfectly in what he was created for. God knew what he was doing when he created your kind, when he created you human being. And he knew what he put in you to help you, to assist you, to empower you, to function. You see, man was created to have dominion, rule, power, authority on the earth, over the things of the earth. But that was stripped away the moment he agreed to the deception of the devil. And he willingly disobeyed God's instructions in that one moment. You see, one moment of weakness, one moment of wrong surrender will cost you eternal hardship, eternal problems. Not even in this life, but in the life to come. You see, in that moment, the most important man, the most important part of this three-dimensional man, it died. He said, if you eat of the fruit, you will die. That was all they knew. They will die. And they did die. Their spirit, the part connected to God, the part that was supposed to rule and reign in the earth, the strongest part of their life died. And the spirit which held everything that empowered man was no more. It was cut off from its spiritual source. You see, the work of salvation consists of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, taking the form of man by becoming everything that was needed to appease God's anger against man. Yes, when you disobey, God is angry. God is displeased. He has a bone to pick with you. But Jesus came. So everything that God had directed towards you for wrongdoing, for disobedience, he turned it on Jesus. And by Jesus taking that, it made a way for man's spirit to be resurrected and reunited back to his creator. So those of us who have accepted this wonderful, powerful act of Jesus by taking our, our death and our penalty he now gives us back something. And that is the power source of our lives. You see, before this man functioned, he functioned before all of this, man just functioned with his soul and his body. And his soul, which was meant to express the will of the spirit, and that in return, this will of the spirit expressed the will of God, then the soul began to rule man's existence. What is the soul? What is the soul? Why are you the way you are right now? Because your soul is in control. The soul is the mind, the will, the senses, the emotions, the desires. Everything has to be logical. Everything has to be analytical. Everything has to be, make sense in your quarters or everything has to be emotional or psychological. Uh, you giving in into everything that you feel. There is no control. There are no parameters. There are no boundaries because your soul is in control. That's why people become addicted. They have to give in 
to what their soul feels. But salvation brought the spirit of man back in to rule all of man. But you see, the soul has fallen. And it poses a fight to this, to this provision. You see, when your soul just does what it wants, it becomes, it stands in enmity with God. And it's an open door for the enemy to control you, like a remote control. So it's not going to be easy for the soul to come back in line to where it's supposed to be, to be under the rule of the spirit. So the power to live this life in the spirit, as God intended, sometimes we realize it's a process and sometimes it's a failure for some people or it can be a great success. But because of what Jesus has done, this process was meant to be a great success in our lives. So why should we live in the spirit? The success of living in the spirit comes to those who belong to Christ. My question to you today, do you belong to Christ? It's one thing to associate with him. It's one thing to know about him. But do you belong to him? When you belong to Christ, that means your true identity is restored. The word identity means the condition or character of who a person is. This reveals who you are and where you came from. Right now in our world, we uh, suffer from the, the, the very horrible crime of identity theft. Someone else takes your identity. You know who you are, but then a stranger doesn't know who you are. If somebody steals your identity and there is no record, no proper record of who you are, you're in trouble. And 2 Thessalonians is saying, Christ has restored you and given you back your true identity. You see, before, what the devil made you feel is that your identity was one of defeat. Your identity was one of failure. Your identity was one of slothfulness. Your identity was one of fear and insubordination. But 2 Thessalonians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man is in Christ, belong to Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away and behold, all things become new. He wants you to be, it's new to us, but it's not new to God. And when Jesus comes into your life, he replaces the old character, the old being, and puts upon you what was meant to be. To us it's new, because we've never experienced joy. We've never experienced peace. We had to use things uh, 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 and we had to substitute things to feel those feelings and to maintain those feelings. But now we have joy unspeakable and full of glory. And we don't need a high to keep it. We don't need something to support us all the time because we are new. Galatians 3.26 says, For in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God through faith. Before Jesus you had no family. You were an alien. There was no covering. There was nothing that you belonged to. Galatians 4, 7. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has also made you an heir. In other words, you had nothing before. And the things you had before was easily taken from you could easily be stolen from you. But he says, now I have changed your position from being a slave to being a son. A son is free. A son is entitled to what the father has. A son is at peace because he's secure 
with the covering of his father. Not only when you belong to Christ, you change identity. Some of us say, well, you know, I've said the sinner's prayer and I accept Jesus. I accept Jesus. Has your identity changed? Do you really belong to him? Or are you just associated or affiliated with him? He changes your identity and then he comes and he changes ownership. You see, before you accepted Jesus, that space was empty. And that space was filled with a master. A master who controlled you. This is what Ephesians 2 says. In the past, you were spiritually dead because of your sins and the things you did against God. Are you listening to the word? I'm taking my time because many of us, we say we live for the Lord. But are we living in the way that he intended us? He said in the past, you were spiritually dead because of your sins and the things you did against God. Are you still, in, still doing things against God? Then that's not your past. Yes, it says, in the past, your lives were full of those sins. You live the way the world lives. And the world following the ruler of the evil powers that are above the earth. The world follows the devil. The prince and the power of the air. And that same spirit is now working in those who refuse to obey God. God tells you something and say, God, that's hard. God, I don't think I can do it. You are still operating and responding out of your soul. Your soul produces limitations. But those who hear God obeys God. He says in the past, all of us lived like that, trying to please our sinful selves. That wh that's why you can't get rid of that addiction. That's why you keep being drawn to the wrong company and the wrong conversations and the wrong kind of thinking. Why? Because we are controlled by our master, the devil. We did all the things our body and our mind wanted because our spirits were dead. Corinthians 6 says, now you have come to Christ. He said, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own, for you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which belongs to God. It's time to change ownership. I met a friend of mine, and she says, you know what? We're working at the same company, but the company has changed hands. There there are new owners and because of that there is a new vision for the company there are new methods and new ideas being implemented because the owners want new results when you are given a change of ownership what you could not do before God is empowering you to do now and he's saying I have given you I am in charge now. I am impl implementing new rules now. I am going to bring forth new results out of you. Ah, it's time to change ownership. You see, the owner you had before did not want you to succeed. It was out of his mind. He did not want you to prosper. He did not want you to be all that is inside of you. You have not begun to tap what God has placed inside of you. Why? Because you're going on feelings. You're going on intellect. You're going on just what you know and you are limited. Ah, But when you change ownership, that spirit man that is connected to God comes alive and there are no limitations. There are no barriers. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The results of my life, anything I put my hand to do, the visible results are going to be different. Why? Because I'm under new management. I'm under new ownership. Ah, not only do you change identity and ownership, but you change your 
existence. You change the state of, of your being. Ephesians 2 says, but God has so much loving kindness. He loved us with such a great love. Even when we were dead because of sin, he made us alive by what Christ did for us. You have been saved from the punishment of sin by his loving favor. Listen to me, when you belong to Jesus, sin can live there. Sin can have control over you. I know your soul will fight against it. Your soul is comfortable. We have been made familiar with things that will kill us, with things that will fail us, with things that will pull us down. But God is saying, I am bringing you to the point uh, where these things must become unfamiliar, must become uncomfortable. Uh, and that is what happens. Uh, that is the empowerment when you belong to Christ. Uh, to live in the spirit, uh, you must belong to Christ. Uh, because belonging to Christ, uh, you can do more than you were able to do before. You can live up uh, to what you have been able to for what you have been created to do when you live in the spirit the success of those who live in the spirit yes God does his thing Jesus does his thing in your life but we must do something we must crucify the flesh wow now we're getting down to some real stuff now we're getting down to the place why some people walk away. Why some people live and they don't experience all the favor and the joy that God has for them. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. We're talking about living in the spirit now. Your Christianity, it is imperative that you live in the spirit in order to experience the fullness of being a follower of Christ. This is not something Christ does. Christ has already been crucified. Christ already went through the scourging and the torment and the death. But this is something we must choose to do as a result of what Christ has done. Because of what Christ has done. The part of us that offends God. He said, you now put it to rest. Kill it out of your life. That word crucify is the word storu. And it is used figuratively as putting the old self to death. By submitting all your decisions, your desires, your thinking to the Lord. And this is to utterly and decisively reject the decision to live independently from him. My friend, right now, if Jesus is not head of your life, you are living independently from him. And that is a dangerous position to be in. What are we doing? Living in the spirit. We're talking about living in the spirit. But when you are not living in the spirit, you have a greater capacity to walk as your soul walks. And to walk independently and rebelliously. It's like somebody came and paid the price so you wouldn't have to be locked in a prison and serve a life sentence for the rest of your life. And when you come out, you treat that person with disdain. You treat them as though they have not done anything. But you know what? Where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. The more that you are forgiven is the more that you will love, is the more that you will feel obligated to. What must we put to death? The flesh with all its passions and desires. This body receives the signals to your, our souls. Oh, you're hungry? Let's eat. Your, your stomach is filled, but your mind, your, your mind is telling you, your, that the appetite is telling you, eat some more. Eat some more. Eat some more till you feel sick. My God. Your body is 
being controlled by your soul. And if your soul is not dead to Christ, crucified to Christ, then you're going to continue to be in trouble. Why must we crucify the flesh? Romans 8, 8 says, For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. The things of this world will continue to hold you captive. You must have money in order to live. You must want, and money brings us into greed. And greed brings us into selfishness. He said, the mind that is set on the flesh and the things of the world, it is hostile to God. I don't want to serve God because that means I, I, I can't do, do what I want. For it does not submit to the, to the law of God. And it cannot. Even though you want to, you cannot without Christ. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Wow. Christian, make sure you belong to God. Because the things that you're doing and the decisions that you're making... If it does not please God, you are still functioning in the flesh rather than the spirit. You're still functioning to please yourself rather than to rule and reign in a godly manner. What does the flesh consist of? For those of you who probably don't know. And you say, no, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. Let's hear. Let's hear if you really belong to Christ. Now, the works of the flesh are evident. Wow. In, in other words, it can be seen. It is manifested through your body. Sexual immorality. Anything that is impure. Sensual. I, idolatry. Sorcery, enmity, you're always in enmity and strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, you're always in competition with somebody, you don't want to see somebody prosper, dissensions, division, drunkenness, my God, orgies, anything that the world say you must try, you try. And it leads you to a path to make you miserable. It, it's wonderful at the first. It feels good. But at the end, there is destruction. Something is always taken away from you. Something is always stolen from you. That is the result of doing what you want when you want. Why does the flesh express these things? Because we have freely allowed the things that bring disobedience to God to influence our soul, which is our mind, our will, and our desires. And we have created a gateway to the body. So the body makes these things visible through acts of disobedience, like the ones I mentioned before. We need to crucify this flesh every day. If you're accustomed telling untruth, God, you are the way, the truth, and the life. I need truth to come through me. I need to deal in truth. I need to deal in what is real because untruth are lies are, are, are deceptions. Lord, help me not to be fearful. I'm living intimidated all the time. I'm pulling back. Anytime I'm given an opportunity to use my potential, I'm scared and I'm covering. And like Moses, I'm telling, telling God, use somebody else. Listen to me, you're still operating in the flesh. We've got to crucify it. As it comes up in our lives, put it to death. God, that's why Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but it is Christ that lives in me. In other words, God, Jesus, you didn't die in vain. You died so I can be the best person that I can be. So every day, anything that comes up that will make God displeased, that will make me uncomfortable, that will put distance between me and God, God, I set it aside. 
I kill it completely. When something is dead, it cannot feel. When something is dead, you, they, it has nothing to lose. Come on now. Well, Rev, you don't know what is happening in my life. You don't know what is against me. Listen, when you're dead, not even the debt collector could come and collect. Why? Because you're dead. There's nothing to receive. There's nothing to pressure. Come on now. There's nothing to, you cannot get hurt feelings when you die. Come on. In that state, when your, 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 all these things, your will, your emotions, your mind, your intellect, when these things are handed over, my God, and they are dead and you're not trying to operate it for yourself, then you begin to live not with Christ, but in Christ. So in other words, your response is going to be Jesus. The way Jesus would respond. The way God would respond. Somebody will stand up and cuss you out, but you will stand up and smile because you're dead. You don't feel that. You don't have to feel embarrassed. You don't have to feel broken. You don't have to feel small because you're dead. And my response to you will be what God, what God will respond to you. My response to you, my God. And that is where the change comes. And we need to let God work in this area of our lives. Rev, I thought you're going to come with firepower. No, I'm coming with knowledge. And the problem in Christianity, the Bible says we perish for lack of knowledge. I don't want you to die the way that you are. I don't want you to think that you're a Christian and really and truly you are not pleasing God. You are not living the life of the Christian. You are not progressing and walking in the spirit. When you walk in the spirit, you walk in a higher realm. When you walk in the spirit, you are not on the level of people who are fighting and people who are warring and people who are hostile and people who are murderous in their behavior. You don't walk on that level. When you walk on a higher level, you walk in security. You walk in confidence. And this is the place that God wants us. The success of those who live in the spirit are those who choose to live by the Spirit. What, what are your choices? Are you still taking on the worries of others? Do you still get anxious when crises arise? Are you still bitter and envious and disappointed and discouraged about something that happened a long time ago? God is saying, Jesus took it for you and now your spirit is alive. Your spirit now functions in agreement with the spirit of God. He says, listen, I've sent you a helper. I've given you a helper. Jesus said, I've got to go, but I'm sending you a helper. And that is the Holy Spirit of God. Spirit understands spirit. Spirit can help spirit. Romans 8, 16, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Sometimes some stuff is going to come up and you say, God, am I your child? I feel so alone in this right now. But the Holy Spirit will come and he will confirm to you, you are the child of God. You are walking in faith and in victory. 1 Corinthians six seventeen. but he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. In other words, how you walk, that's God walking. That's the Holy Ghost walking in you. You are being led by the Spirit. 1 John 4, 13, by this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his Spirit. Hallelujah. If you're still, your feelings and your emotions and your insecurities come up when something happens. Come up. When you are confronted, then you are still in the flesh. And God says it's time to live in the spirit. How do we live by the Holy Spirit? When we are taught by him. Are you ready to be taught by the Holy Spirit? He understands that this soul needs to be re-educated. 
Don't just come and say, Jesus, help me, Jesus, help me. There is a re-education, he said, by the renewing of your mind through the word of God. We are taught by him. John 14, 26, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance that I've said to you. He is the greatest teacher. Sometimes we just need instruction of where to go and what to do, knowledge of how to handle situations. He is your teacher. 1 Corinthians 2.12, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given to us by God. I'm taking my time and teaching you so that you will freely understand what you have. Do not live below your privilege. What is inside of you, the devil is afraid of it. The devil can't afford for you to untap that because then his power, will, and he has no power. He has, let me, let, me, let me put something right to you. Everybody, the power of the devil, the devil has no power. When Jesus died on the cross, he disarmed him. He made a show of him openly. He exposed him for the coward he is. The only power he possesses is the power that you give to him. Oh God, somebody just got a revelation right there. How do you live in the spirit when you are fully dependent on him? Galatians 5.16, but I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Walk. That is an action word. Live. Keep doing what you're doing, but do it by the spirit. And when you do it by the spirit, you won't fall. You won't make so mistakes. Your soul will come into alignment much quicker. But stop fighting God. Stop saying, I, I feel, I know, I want. That means you're in total enmity and hostility to God. Allow the spirit to change you. Allow the spirit walk with him. John 14. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. He said, I will ask the Father to give you another helper, to be with you always. He's with you right there, right where you are, right where you're sitting in all that mess, in all that confusion, in all those bad decisions. He is right there. He is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. If you don't receive Jesus, you can't receive him because it neither sees him nor recognize him. You know why you can, you can con people and, and get into schemes and, and be in things that will steal from people and hurt, hurt each other and not feel any way about it? Because your spirit is dead. But when your spirit comes alive, you will be able to recognize the spirit of God. He lives in you. Romans 8, 26, in the same way, the Spirit also joins to help in our weaknesses. I know you're weak. I know sometimes you don't have all the answers, but he came to help us in our weaknesses because we do not know what or how to pray for as we should. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with unspoken groanings. Wow. Look at all this resource that God has given to us. We are empowered through the spirit. Acts 1.8 says, but you shall receive power after which the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You don't have to dangle with the devil. You don't have to go into portals that you don't understand. You don't have to make blood sacrifices. You don't have to meditate and put your mind in an open place for any spirit to enter and to occupy. He said, but you will receive power through the Holy Spirit. I want you to know that you are empowered. If you're dependent on him, you are taught by the spirit of God. God is calling for a quality representative who will reflect his likeness, his image, and his glory 
in the earth right now. And our walk in the spirit through this life is victory. Rev, I'm serving God. I'm crying out to God. I'm doing everything the preacher said. And I'm not seeing victory. That's because there is no life in the spirit. There is no walk in the spirit. When we come into agreement with God, we come in step with the spirit of God that he has given to us. Jesus paid the price. And the empowerment we enjoy can be right now in eternal life. He says, he that believes in me will not die, but he will experience everlasting life. My friend, look at me. I am living in my eternal life. No, Rev. We've got to wait till we get to heaven. and glo No. Eternal everlasting life starts now. Victorious life. Overcoming life. All conquering life. All successful life. It is now. You don't have to wait. Why? Because the spirit is operating now. The Spirit is working with you now. The Holy Spirit is in you and you have been reconciled back to God and you are being called to operate to your fullest potential now. So eternal life begins now. And that walk in the Spirit, that walk in the Spirit, my God, you will never be imprisoned. You will never feel limited. You will never feel imprisoned, but you will be free. For whom the Lord Jesus set, makes free is free indeed. And it is through that spirit of freedom. His spirit working in you. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Rev, I thought I knew God. I said the sinner's prayer. I thought I was a Christian. But I'm not experiencing life in the spirit. I'm still crying over things. My body is under pressure because of things that my mind and my heart is feeding me. And it's not things that are nice. It's not things that are welcoming or, or, or is helping me. Rev, I'm missing the mark somewhere because I'm reading the word of God, but I'm not seeing what it really means. I'm not understanding that's because the Spirit of God is still silent in your life. But God wants you to crucify that flesh. Put it on the altar. Nail it to the cross. So that now your spirit can come alive. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. He is able to quicken your mortal body. It's time to walk in the spirit, church. Child of God. It's time to be victorious in the spirit, not spouting some words or what you hear other people say, but finding yourself and your position and coming back to the place where God has created you to be far above principalities, powers, worldliness, to walk in victory. Put your hand on your heart. And lift the other hand to God and say, My Heavenly Father, I come before you. Thank you for this word. Bring me into the revelation of this word. Father, I ask you to forgive me. Forgive me for wrong thinking, for wrong understanding. But now that your word is open to me, there's so much more I'm ready to receive from your spirit. And I awaken my spirit as I give my life to Jesus. I want to belong to him. I want to walk with him. I want him to live in me so that my identity and my ownership and my life can be new and different. Father, I surrender. I surrender as I crucify every feeling every appetite, every desire, every addiction, every mindset, I put it to death right now by making a decision that I don't want that life anymore. I don't want those feelings anymore. I don't want that attitude anymore. 
but I want Jesus. I want your Holy Spirit to guide me, to lead me into all truth, and I receive it now in Jesus' name. Father, as we reach into these airwaves, the entrance of your word, it brings light. And you are removing all darkness now. Darkness that has clothed and covered the minds of your people. Darkness that is hovering over their atmospheres. Darkness that is laid deep within them. I speak to you now as God did. And I say light be. Light be. And we expose your works in the name of Jesus. And we commend you to be out and to leave them. Leave their mind. Leave their soul as they have made a proclamation and, de and a dedication to God Almighty. Now God, let your spirit rise within them. And let that spirit come alive so that you can speak, so that you can bless, so that you can empower one more time. Holy Spirit, we thank you. There's a sweet spirit in this place. As your mind is open up to truth, lift your hands and begin to worship. Begin to glorify God and let him know that you receive all of it. Not just for this moment, but it will be brought back to your remembrance because the Holy Spirit is alive and well in you. The helper is helping you right now to come out from your situation, to rise out of your circumstance and rise successful and prosperous with no limitations. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Oh, what a mighty, mighty God we serve. It's time to live in the spirit, child of God. It's time to receive all that God has for you. And we pray you can catch us on YouTube. You can catch us on the ministry channel in, on Facebook. Uh, subscribe to our channel. Or you can just look at us. But whatever it is, listen to this message again. Be encouraged again. And know that it's not time to live ignorantly and live below your privilege but it's time to live above this world as we walk and we live victoriously in the spirit of God. I want to say thank you for those of you who are giving and those of you you're receiving from this ministry and God is instructing and educating and blessing you through this anointing and this ministry and you feel that you want to give and sow into good soil. There are forums that are on your screen that whereby you can give. If any of those forums are not available to you, please call our WhatsApp number and we will be able to instruct you on how to sow that seed. So I am your pastor, Reverend Nicole Ballasing Holder. We love, we care about you. And let me remind you again, we have prayer point every Thursday at 8 a.m. You do not want to miss it. So God bless you as we continue to pray for you and to give you what you need to be victorious in this life. I am Reverend Nicole Balusing Holder of Eden Life International. You have been on Cleansing Fire. Live in the spirit and you will see victory in your life. God bless you. We love you.